New Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. the Practical Prayer Podcast Pre-Program Presentation on New Thought Media Network. I was trying to come up with one more, one more bit of P-based uh, alliteration that didn't work. I'm Bill, this is Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting with the P's, right? Because I was going to tell you about something I did with the P's. Okay. Recently. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I've been hanging around you too long. That's, that's Uh-oh. what well, it is, yeah. because it's really... <laughs> Stuff comes out, you know, that everybody ought to have a, have a mentor. You should have one. I, and that was my um, downfall in corporate in the very, in the early years. I didn't have a mentor, so I was like finding my way by myself, which is another story. But I think you should always have a mentor. And specifically, I was uh, speaking to a group at one point and was talking about affirmations and here comes powerful, <laughs> they have to be powerful, personal, present tense. And what's the other thing I, I said? Power, positive. personal, present. Positive, right? Four yeah. Ps, right? And I made a whole thing out of this, four Ps. And I thought, I've been hanging around here too long. Because you know? like, <laughs> like I used to make my own stuff up, right? And this is just started rolling off. And and that's like the... the um, uh, her, uh, what's wrong with me today? I need some water. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing at all wrong with you today. Anyway, that's part of the teaching uh, practical prayer. You know that, and I I could hear your voice saying it as I was saying <laughs> as I was saying it. <laughs> yeah, my okay. work is done. Yeah. No, nah, I don't know. Yeah, I probably have some more stuff to do. And I keep on talking about the same things over and over and over again. And some of them are original and some of them I picked up from somewhere else. And I've just been saying them long enough that people identify them with me. Um, mm. <laughs> one of my mentors, uh, when I uh, attributed a quote to him and he said, no, Ernest Holmes said that, uh, pointed out to me that if you say, um, You know, Ernest Holmes says that the law always works even when it works by appearing not to work. Because you, if you believe that it won't, then it will by looking like it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And that was the quote. And he says, if you say Ernest Holmes said that, and then you say Ernest Holmes said that, and then after you've said it a dozen times, you say, uh, as I've often said. Because <laughs> <laughs> at that point you have. And then you can just drop all reference to it and people can think that it's yours. That's what people say. You could do that. I I knew um, a bishop once that said, you know, I'll give you credit X number of times, but after that, it's mine. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just, I, my parents were very strict. So you didn't do anything out of line in any way. So mm-hmm. if you're going to quote somebody a hundred times, you're going to say where you got this quote from, or that's plagiarism or whatever. So I'm like, I'm all hung up with things like that. So that's a, that's another reason getting this dissertation finished, man. I had so much, like, I'm so way past the page count. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Don't go too far because I have to read it. I know that. I know. And I thought, you know what? He's like so busy. He, he He's going to know all of this stuff. And it's really. It's, you know, there's one mind. There's one source. And basically what we're doing is we're stirring the stuff up and having a different way of, uh, of explaining it. I think there was an interchange between um, uh, Henny Youngman and Jack Benny. Mm -hmm. And Jack Benny said something really funny. 
And Henny Youngman, who is notorious for stealing jokes, said, I wish I'd said that. And Jack Benny says, you will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I think I think so much of Ernest Holmes a lot. And, um, you know, I always give recognition to my Ascended Masters as well. Uh, a couple of uh, Proctor just joined that group recently. But anyway, I... I said, it's one mind. It's like, it's not anybody's exclusively. You give them respect. I do think you give people respect for, you know, what they've said and what they've learned. But it's all one mind. We're all sharing the same information. You know, I just pulled it out at this point. Somebody else might have pulled it out in the 1800s or the 1400s. And I'm just glad to be here, you know, <laughs> just glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. So your dissertation is uh, this close to being ready? It is this close to being ready. So it's, you know, I do things like a lot, right? I just. Yes, you do. Yeah. So undoing a lot is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's record a podcast. Um, right. we, we only had a couple of seconds before we, uh, we got onto the pre-show here. And by the way, for everybody who's, uh, who's watching along on Facebook and YouTube, this is the live recording session for the Practical Prayer podcast. And what happens is we'll play the intro to the podcast, then we'll do whatever the, 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 the segments of the podcast are, and then come back and chat some more, look at your comments, uh, if you have anything that you'd like to share with us or ask us to talk about, um, and basically have the conversation afterwards. Um, and then the audio part of the recordings goes to Bosnia and Herzegovina, where David edits it into podcast episodes and some Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning at 3 a, 4 a.m. Eastern time, it goes into the in, it, off into podcast land. But this is the one that's fresh and live and immediate. And you, you'd wanted to talk a little bit about what uh, was going on at the International New Thought Alliance Congress in Chicago last week. Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't there. I wanted so, so much to be there, but I, I just couldn't. I'm swimming in too many pages of stuff right now. But anyway, yes, I did because uh, I just love new thought. I absolutely love new thought. And I've dabbled in different areas of it. I call them denominations. I'm not sure if that's the correct word, but from the That other was one side. of the things that came up in the conversation last week. Really? Well, I, yeah. And, and I had so many concerns when I was in the traditional church about denominations and so forth. And um, those things were not necessarily well received. But here's my here's the thing. Um, when I came to New Thought, I I learned about oneness, one, one mind, and all of the ones. So I can explain. I really get it. But it's not just relevant to New Thought. It's relevant to life, to the human condition. To, you know, so it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. It's all one. But now on the other side of the fence, there's so many different denominations, you know, and I used to talk about coming together and around our our thing, our how we were like rather than being different. Mm -hmm. OK, that that didn't work. So I came over to New Thought. And well, and you you, you did three or four Christian yes. denominations on your own. I think I, maybe, I maybe five. The one you grew up with, the one that you went into, then the three that you led. And stuff I don't tell. Yes, exactly. Because I always thought like there's one God. And, you know, that whole traditional church is tied together by Jesus. You know, Jesus sandals, just his sandal straps just ties everything together. Mm -hmm. However, there's so much difference um, in the, the denominations that I thought was irrelevant. Right. These things are relevant when it comes to um, being being um, non-judgmental. I used to use this term a lot: showing the grace of God. Mm -hmm. You you can't. There's no division in that. There's no different way to do that. You only do that through kindness and love and generosity and blah blah blah. All the things that we say we have, and then you know blah blah, not used it. So. I come to New Thought and I see all these, what I think are different denominations. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, 
is this the same thing? And I, you know, tried to understand the differences in each one. And then I just decided like this. I'm sticking with Ernest Holmes, the Ascended Masters. We're all cool. Nobody's fighting. No difference. I'll go out in the world and live. Okay. And hence, you know. Well, I am completely primed to talk about that based on uh, what happened last week in Chicago. Let's go ahead and start the podcast, and then we will do an episode on New Thought Denominations. Okay. Speaking of interfering with oneness. All right. Now I'm going to play the podcast open, and then when we come back... We're going to be doing the podcast. Okay. I'm you should say, it. welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. That's your next cue. I'm getting it. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And we gonna... wanted to talk about new thought denominations. Yeah. If, first of all, is denominations the proper term? No. Okay. It is not the proper term. But instead of trying to figure out what the proper term is and introduce it that way, um, we're going to start with denominations because that's what people think of it as and then work our way backwards to what it actually is. Okay. Uh, and by denominations, you're talking about the, the, the major branches of new thought, which are things like unity uh, and the unity uh, churches, uh, religious science or centers for spiritual living, divine mm -hmm. science churches. Um, and then there's also the Universal Foundation for Better Living, uh, which is an offshoot of unity. And then there's agape, which is an offshoot of religious science. And there are other individual ones like uh, Hillside Chapel in Atlanta, and there are some other large ones that have made their own mark. Um, so people think of those as denominations because they're different ways of doing the same thing, in the same way that the Methodists and the Baptists are different denominations of Christianity. Uh, they have an awful lot in common, but they identify themselves by what they're by, by what's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you're not one of us. <laughs> And it's so much that makes sense in in each one. Uh, one of the challenges that I had was believing in one thing that was common to this denom or identified with this denomination, but also believing in this common to another denomination and thinking, you know, there got, there's got to be a way. What what made this split in the first place? Like, did you just decide <laughs> to do this just because churches split because somebody decides they want to decide they want to do their own thing, and you have to create some kind of distinction, I guess. Because if you're not going to stay with the whole, you have to say, well, this is why I'm different, and the differences become so. They, they're just not relevant to the core values uh, or the the principles, the founding fundamental principles. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I, I'm yeah. So um, you talk because I'm going to okay. hear about and, that. And the advantage that we have in New Thought is that we're still going through the process of um, divvying ourselves up and sorting ourselves out because New Thought is only 100, 150 years old as opposed to Christianity, which is 2000 years old. And there are a lot of uh, decisions and waypoints and um, uh, the detours that happened so long ago that nobody really knows why that happened. I was having a wonderful conversation with the uh, executive director of Unity Worldwide Ministries because uh, he was on a, a panel with me and we were talking about 
um, you know, what, what we have in common and what makes us different. And he said that there are three different ways that people teach the unity philosophy. So now that's just one of them, mm. but there are three different ways of doing it. You know, and one of them starts with the Fillmores, who are the founders and have a really powerful story. And then others start with the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, which is what the Fillmores did. And they bring a lot of Jesus into that. And then the third way to do that is to be more new agey and talk about the interfaith aspect of it. Because the teaching, the philosophy, the healing works regardless of what religion you're in. Uh, and that's just one of them that works in all of those different ways. Mm -hmm. So... Based on that and what I've seen my fellow New Thought ministers, mostly in religious science, um, but in some other denominations as well, is we all have our own way of teaching stuff. And if you're looking around for something and you got this person over there that's teaching it their way and that person teaching it their way and you find me and you like the way that I teach it, well, that makes me your denomination because <laughs> you, you, you have a preference for the way that I'm teaching it. And that's fine as long as we remember that it's just a different way of teaching the same thing, the same principles, mm -hmm. the same truth. Because, oh, by the way, in New Thought, you don't have to believe anything because we say to believe it. We give you some suggestions that there are some things that we've observed about how the world works. And if you work them, they work. And so, you know, it doesn't matter whether you believe it works or not. It's going to work, even if it works by not by seeming like it doesn't work so i was with you <laughs> i stay with you on that okay i yeah i get that because before i met you i had been around centers for spiritual living mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot and tuned in uh, in different parts of the country broadcasts in different parts of the country. And so I had a real clear, pretty clear understanding of what that part of New Thought was like. But I didn't know that there were so many others. You know, mm -hmm. I knew about unity and I said, OK, unity, it's pretty much too much like what I had come from. And I was, to be honest, to use the word that's not cool to use, but I was just afraid that if I if I stopped in unity, if I unpacked my bags in unity, I would not be able to see new thought clearly mm -hmm. because it was so, do you know what I mean? It was just so, had too much um, in common. Yeah, so that second yeah. one that we're talking about is the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible. You were already doing that. I was already doing that, but I didn't have a mentor to help me in area, in the gray areas, you know, that I might not have even known were gray areas. Right. So, you know, I thought, well, that probably is the best place for me to be in unity. So I'm making all of these um, decisions on my own. And then, of course, I met you. And this is an entirely different experience, not only in uh, interpreting and living out. It's very experiential. Would you would that be a good way? Absolutely. This is the laboratory of your life. And we're going to do some experiments and see what works for you. Yeah, and, and I'm absolutely not accustomed to experiential learning. That's, you know, I'm just, so that I said, okay, I'll, I'll dive into this <laughs> because you got to do, you've got to try different things to learn it all. I, yeah. I think, you know, my suspicion is that you were you actually were very well served by not stopping at unity. And there's nothing at all wrong with unity. But because of your background, you probably would have gotten stuck in an intellectual cul-de-sac and driven around in circles for a long time because enough of it was similar to what you were already doing that the, 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 the subtlety and the nuance would have, would have would have escaped. Yes. The thing that new thought denominations all have in common is that when we turn our eyes to God, when we turn our eyes to the infinite, when we turn our eyes to the infinite creative power that created everything, we close them and look within. Mm -hmm. We do not look up to the heavens. We do not look out there. We do not look longingly for someone who may or may not show up and do us a favor. The thing we have in common is that there's one and we're it. And that creative power that creates everything, we're using it and we're creating our lives according to our beliefs. Now, there's a lot of stories about Jesus where he was doing that and demonstrating that and telling people that they could do that. And 
to go through the Bible and instead of having it be a, a, a book about how cool Jesus was and we should put him up on a pedestal and bow down to him, Jesus was our way shower and said, everything I'm doing, you can do. Learn how to do it. Un unpack your baggage. <laughs> Clear out your closet and do this. And what we're trying to do is follow his instructions and clear out our baggage and do this. Which is extremely powerful, really is. And um, it opens a world of, of spirituality, of freedom, just to put Jesus in a different light, you know, to see Jesus in a different way. That's a big challenge for some, for some. But in the different denominations of new thought that I peeped into, that's there. You know, there doesn't seem to be any conflict there. They're a little heavy on the Jesus part in unity. Um, mm -hmm. A little and, heavy. And at unity, boy, the, the, the folks in unity can get themselves into trouble when they're talking to somebody who's seriously committed to one of the traditional Christian denominations by referring to Jesus as the master teacher. Like, nope, Lord and Savior, and you better shut up because... I got a gun. <laughs> Stop yeah. saying that. Stop saying that about my guy. <laughs> this is, and yeah, I was talking to my husband the other day. I said, you know, and I think you just like, just let this thing go because it's, it requires a bit of, well, you called it heavy lifting, but there needs to be a willingness to say, I want to know more and looking at this Jesus in a different from a different perspective or across the street and seeing a different perspective is freeing. You see more, but you know, it takes a little guts, I think. And, and there's probably a better word, but I think everybody understands, take some guts mm -hmm. take some know, guts to challenge your own beliefs. Yep. yep. But I, some you know, spiritual and emotional and intellectual and sometimes physical courage. But if God is God, then you're going to be okay. Like, what's what's to be scared of, right? If you know, if God hmm. is loving and cool as we think God is, then God can handle the questions. Ask them. Well, yeah, that's a very new thought. There's there's nothing that's <laughs> there's, there's nothing that, that's off limits because God's okay with all of it. You know. And we talked about that a whole bunch before. If you could actually annoy or irritate or anger God, then you'd be in control of the relationship because you could decide when to think or say those things, and that would control God. And I don't think it works that way. Uh, well, then, you know, that kind of makes God a bit puny. And, well, um, if, if I'm know. the one who's in control of my relationship with God, then what? where's that infinite power? Exactly. <laughs> where, where, when did God give me the power to make God angry? Exactly. Okay, I'm not in control of that. I am absolutely not in control of that. So there's two thoughts that are going through my mind. And um, I'm going to tell you about the Baskin-Robbins metaphor first, and then we're going to get back to basics after we take a break. And this is something that came up last week. So we're talking about the different brands and, and variations in new thought. And my observation is that it's like going to Baskin-Robbins. Now, when we go to Baskin-Robbins, I am probably going to get chocolate chip cookie dough. And somebody else is probably going to get pralines and cream. And somebody else is going to get vanilla. But nobody is going to get cauliflower. We're all getting ice cream. <laughs> we're all getting ice cream. Okay? We're, we're not going to pick up motor oil at the Baskin Robbins. So which of the 31 flavors that we're choosing from, New Thought is the ice cream and the ice cream store. We're all going to that, and we're just doing it with slightly different flavors. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And with that, we will take a break and upon return, get back to fundamentals. Okay. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness 
even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol and here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to go back to basics, right? We're going to go back to basics. We're talking about new thought denominations. And my background is in uh, religious science, which is the one that was founded by Ernest Holmes and described initially in the Science of Mind textbook. Uh, and the other ones are divine science, uh, which is the granddaddy of all of the current denominations, uh, which was founded in 1888. You can tell that I just went to a Congress where we're talking about this stuff. Uh, Unity was founded a year later. Um, and then there's the Universal Foundation for Better Living, which was founded by Dr. Johnny Coleman in Chicago uh, and has grown mm -hmm. into its own sub-denomination. That's based on unity. Um, and uh, then there's Agape, uh, which is Michael Beckwith's work uh, based in Los Angeles uh, that's continuing to grow and evolve uh, and work. Um, and I'm most familiar with the religious science ones. There are some others, uh, individual ones, uh, and the, the Swedenborgians have been around forever and ever. Um, mm -hmm. we, we all trace our lineage, all the ones that I was talking about previously, um, to the philosophical work that was done by Ralph Waldo Emerson. So he and the transcendentalists thought about these ideas of oneness and what that meant, and that it, there's not a Father and a Son and a Holy Spirit in the sense of three different powers that are doing different sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no duality. There's no force for evil. He said there's one, and we're all using it. And didn't tell anybody how to do it. <laughs> he implied that we could change our life experience through our beliefs and our thinking, but he didn't say how to do it. So, and that was in the early 1800s. And in the mid 1800s, this guy, Phineas Parker's Quimby, uh, up in New England, um, tried it. So he came up with the technique of mental healing and he did lots and lots of experimentation and uh, healed, I think, 12,000 people in seven mm -hmm. years. And it worked. And then Thomas Troward, who had been a judge in India, the, uh, the British judge in India, when he retired, he started lecturing and writing uh, on this stuff and really brought a lot of the pieces together. And those were the foundational pieces that turned into these new thought teachings. So we all have that in common. And oh, by the way, Ralph Waldo Emerson was a Swedenborgian because Emanuel Swedenborg had similar ideas a hundred years earlier than that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that um, teaching is still around. And so we all have this in common. And what we want to do is be able to identify what we have in common and, and then be able to celebrate the things that make us distinct and, and different. And like I was talking about before, the different flavors mm -hmm. of new mm -hmm. thought. So um, and I was having a conversation based on the, uh, uh, the, the Congress that um, when, when you start talking about the fundamentals, the principles, Ernest Holmes has 11 and that's in the Declaration of Principles, which is in Science of Mind magazine, every issue. And it's 11 different things that we believe. Um, and then Agape has their own list, but there's only six of them. <laughs> there okay. used to be five, but they added another one. And I don't disagree with almost any of it. There's one word that I disagree with that Ernest Holmes said, but we're going to let that go right now, because otherwise it's just going to be a discussion. Of, it's going to be a disagreement between me and the founder. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but when we started New Thought Philadelphia and focused on let's change from the language that has been to the new language, we said, this is a teaching of oneness. There's got to be one fundamental belief that we believe. So what is that? Mm -hmm. And so we discussed back and forth what it is. And the notion is it's done unto you as you believe. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said that very clearly. Mm -hmm. And we can celebrate the fact that Jesus said it, or we can celebrate the fact that it's true. <laughs> so the way that we say it at New Thought Philadelphia is we believe there's one power, love, intelligence, or force that creates everything, including us, and that we each use that power, love, intelligence, or force to create our lives according to our beliefs. And everything else is details. Now, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of flexibility and variability in the details. And, mm -hmm. oh, we added the word force 
just because, um, you know, starting in 1977, there was an idea of the force. And if I could use the force, then I would, and you can. It's just that the tool we use with the force um, is not a lightsaber. It's a prayer. <laughs> and everything else is built on top of that. And when I look through the, the Declaration of Principles, the 11 different things that Ernest Holmes is saying, they're all different ways of expressing, understanding, and experiencing that same fundamental thought. That there is mm -hmm. one that creates everything, including us, and that we use it ourselves to create our experience. I remember when I found New Thought and uh, the size of my textbook, and then I went online. Yeah, I was collecting all. Memorized these principles. But then I, when I would go to another New Thought phenomenon, it might be different. So... I'm looking at it saying, well, how do I, how do I land? Because I have to, I don't want to, I have to land somewhere, but I didn't like the idea of I got to land somewhere because I had landed before in, in other denominations. And I thought, I just want to know what this is. And so I looked at some denominations were very um, organized, you know, very, very structured and huge and, and had a lot of bureaucracy going on. And I thought, I know about that. I need I, <laughs> not doing that. And then it was a couple, but I, I chose this one because it was small and different. It's experiential. So that is out of my comfort zone completely. And I thought if it's completely out of your comfort zone, then you're going to learn. And I needed to to be able to learn all of the nuances and the you know the whatever. So I thought it was a good place to land. But it's it's a beautiful tapestry. And when you have something that is so beautiful, it's it seems like it's almost wrong to stand apart and say we're this and this one is not that. You know. So that's why I was really anxious to hear what you had to say and what the conclusion of the matter is going to be yeah well one of my mentors uh, several years ago pointed out that if somebody's in any of the branches of new thought they think that their way is the way and they think that the other branches of new thought are different or got something wrong and the interesting thing he said is as soon as somebody's trained in a second one they understand how exactly the same we all are and basically, it's just whether you're going to be scooping out of this tub or that tub at the same ice cream shop. Mm -hmm. And that is tremendously empowering for me because there are people who love the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to do Bible study and get the metaphysical truths out of the Bible is very, very powerful. Um, there's a lot of truth in Scripture. Um, there's a lot of stuff that gets misinterpreted in Scripture, but that's where the fun comes in. Uh, and I have actually started using more and more scripture, whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament or the Bhagavad Gita, because uh, they all have some really wonderful things to say. And all of the world's religions have some really great holidays. Uh, New Thought doesn't have any holidays um, other than the solstice, and that we didn't make that up. We just kind of wait for it to show up and then have fun. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they all have something to offer. And instead of saying, oh, that's theirs and this is ours and we have to keep that outside the corral and this is inside the corral, it's all one. We remind mm -hmm. ourselves it's all one and that we are free to take the input and be uplifted by whatever's there. Now, if I want to take Jesus' words and use them to injure somebody, I've missed the point. Mm -hmm. But people do that all the time. Well, yeah, yeah but yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. No, but in, in New Thought, you have the opportunity not to do that, mm -hmm. you know. I, I read uh, something today, I think it was a post or something, and they said, uh, can prostitutes be uh, change and become good wives? And I, I can tell you that it's something about that <laughs> that just went through me, right? I don't, I've never been a prostitute. I don't know any prostitutes, but it was a hurtful, hurtful thing to me 
to read that somebody would ask that question. Because I said, I said, um, they're doing just like everybody else. You know, we're everybody's trying to make it. And some people were born into situations where they that's their only negotiating skill and so mm -hmm. forth. But it's prostitutes, prostitutes and whoever else you can decide that you want to group up and hate. And I have a real thing about that because that in no way reflects God. It in mm -hmm. no way reflects um, love or unity in any way. And so on this side, <laughs> I say this side of the fence, I hope that's okay. <laughs> but on, on this side of the fence, you get to be what, you get to live what Jesus taught for real. If you think that that's important, you get to do that. If you get to be an, an, uh, an expression of the God that you've talked about, you know, it's no more talking you get to be. And it's, it's, um, it's one of those look in the mirror type things. You've talked all this time. What do you really think? Hmm. You know, um, yeah. What, how can you even say can a prostitute become? A person isn't defined by their job, and that's all there is. I can't imagine anybody doing that, you know, because they're having a great time doing it. We do what we have to do, and it's the person that matters. And on this side of the fence, I get to be that. And, and that's what I'm trying to, I think is so important. You know, it's, it's like you get to be real over here. So with all of the denominations, it's like, well, let's go to the ice cream thing. You know? Okay. All right. Um, it's all ice cream. It's all good. I'm a vanilla person. There is only vanilla on the planet. All the rest of the ice cream is fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect people mixing crap in with perfectly good vanilla ice cream exactly that's okay. my you know but but at the same time you know people are having a ball and the ice cream man's making a living so mm -hmm. you know there what's you the thing, what's the deal you know i don't like all of that chunks and stuff in my ice cream but you do what am i supposed to do come over and slap the ice cream out of your hand that's what people like to do that's god right mm -hmm. that's god please let me criticize your ice cream choices Ah, as though yeah. it's going to affect my life at all. And, and it's interesting that you're you know, talking about the, the criticism of, you know, can the prostitute become, a, you know, a, a good wife? Um, because that's one of those victimless crimes. I mean, you don't, in, in, in the whole prostitute ecosystem, you don't find anybody complaining. <laughs> now, muggers, hitmen, thieves, yeah. There's some there's some change of behavior that needs to happen, and probably for prostitutes as well. Um, I, one of my daughter's friends is a sex worker, and she actually loves the work, and that's what she's doing. And it's different for me, but um, you know, there's there's a way that she can celebrate her individuality and do what she's doing and uh, live a, a rich life doing that, and that's fine. You know, but is it? Yeah, isn't it okay? This is about unity. And I keep going back to what I've learned in New Thought, and it just is, you would think I've felt this all my life. It's about unity. Mm -hmm. So where do you get, how do you stand apart from somebody else and question their, who they are? Do you know, we didn't, they are who they are. I, let's go with the good wife thing, okay? All right. I could be called into question on that because I can't <laughs> cook a lick and I don't <laughs> like it. I've been married 42 years come December. I don't like it and I have never tried to be a better cook. And my husband does not care. But okay. people on the outside have looked, you know, what's even the matter with you? In the churches, you know, they would criticize me for that. And I'm thinking, what does that have to do with anything, right? I do this better than this. Like, what do you care? Um, so it's it, either we're going to be one or we're not. And, <laughs> and, and accept, you know, what people decide they want to do and be. 
because that's their contribution to the world. If you let that people be who they are, then they can make their beautiful contribution to the world. See, that was not supposed, we ain't going in that direction. We're supposed to be talking <laughs> about, <laughs> about what happened because I'm, so, I'm still curious. Because let me ask you, so we have, you have a head of each denomination. At, at right? the, the Congress, yeah. Yeah, and okay. there, there are um, five organizations and 10 people, nine people who are represented there because there are several different flavors of each one. You know, there's so they'll probably remain separate. Well, they're right? doing different things. You know, some of them, like there's the Divine Science Federation, which is the organizations that are doing divine science. And then there's the Divine Science Ministers Association, which is the one that uh, credentials the ministers. And so they both have their own unique purpose and they work differently. Same thing with Unity Worldwide Ministries and World Unity World Headquarters. The World Headquarters is the one that publishes the magazines. They run the prayer vigil. They own the campus and uh, and you know do things uh, on the premises. And Unity Worldwide Ministries basically supports the field and the ministers out there who are being trained and educated and supported and running their churches and stuff. So it's two different groups, but it's two different purposes for accomplishing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of different people from Centers for Spiritual Living. And then you had the, the educators from Emerson Institute uh, who are participating there as well, because Emerson is another way of credentialing religious science ministers that's not through CSL. And it turns out that when you dig into it, there's a pretty good reason for everything that's going on, even though you look at it and say, well, this is supposed to be oneness, and it's not. Mm -hmm. So what's the matter with that? Um, it is, you know, it's like at Ben and Jerry's that there's a guy who's in charge of making the ice cream that has chocolate in it and another one who's in charge of the one that has fruit in it and another one's in charge of the ones that has cookies in it. And you say, oh, well, there should just be one. Well, it's like we're, we're divvying up the tasks. We're, <laughs> we're making sure that everybody who has a preference for their flavor is going to get their flavor from somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Vineyards, there should only be white wine. No. <laughs> no, some people don't like some people like bubbly wine give them some of that it's fine so the, the idea is to uh be able to share the gifts uh that come along in a way that's going to be meaningful yeah and the congress it was just so deep and so rich and so much going on there we just can't possibly do it all in a single podcast episode but let us take another break and I, I think that the prayer that we get to do together is on sharing our unique gifts in a way that's going to be helpful. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just $5.95 a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now at GodCall.org. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol. You're with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We've had a good conversation wide-ranging conversation about new thought denominations what we have in common but also the different things that makes us be unique flavors mm -hmm. unique yeah. gifts talents approaches and perspectives because uh, oneness unity does not mean uniformity yeah we can have that we can have nuance and, and difference and in fact that's what the prayer is going to be about we're going to do a practical prayer on sharing our unique gifts and skills and talents because everybody has their own. Everybody is an expression of that one infinite creative power. Every person who exists, everybody within the sound of my voice is a child of God. 
And we are all exactly the same in that nature, that we are the divine expressions of that infinite creative presence, that divine creative power. And we're all put together differently. We are all a slightly different flavor or perhaps wildly different flavor mm -hmm. of that divine power and presence that is God. Yeah. So we get to, to understand what our gifts are and then share them with the world. And whatever way that we are called to do that is good. It must be good because, see point A above, we are all divine <laughs> and perfect expressions of God's infinite love. So when we take that to prayer, we recognize that there is an infinite creative power. There is that one. We call it God or spirit or nature or the creator or the divine or the big bang, whatever it is that we call it. It is that one from which everything is created. That divine power has been sharing itself, revealing itself, expressing itself and unfolding itself as all of its creation since the very beginning of time. Everything that exists is that one folding back upon itself and revealing itself in a new and specific and particular way. And that is true of me and of each one listening to this prayer. Each of us is a divine and perfect expression of God's infinite love, unique in our own way each with our own perspective, our own timing, our own observation, our own thoughts, our own abilities and talents and skills and gifts and interests and motivations. Each of us in one way exactly the same and each of us in our own way unique and special. So as we open to the awareness of the gifts that we are, the gifts that we have, the gifts that we are able to share, we are guided in sharing those gifts in a way that brings uplift and good into our world, into our experience as health and vitality, as prosperity and experiences of enoughness and plenty, of love and connection and relationship with our beloved, with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, with our government, with our coworkers, with our clients, with our world as our creativity, the way that we share those gifts, the way that we express ourselves in the world and, and bring newness and freshness in our own special way, the way that we connect with spirit, all opportunities to do it in our own unique and special way, to open a channel to allow that goodness to flow into experience. So each one of us right now, I'm claiming this by action of this prayer, each one of us is guided and inspired and aware of the gift that we are and the ways that we can share it. Inspired to share and bring more of that goodness and richness and sweetness and love into the world through whatever work or activity or intention that we are expressing. And that's how love unfolds. That is how good is revealing itself even more fully and richly in the world. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the willingness of each one to share, to connect, to deepen, to let go of distractions and disbelief and open to that truth, to allow that bright light of love that they are to shine. I'm grateful for the wonderful way that that light shines. I'm grateful for the gifts being shared. I'm grateful for the gifts being received. I'm grateful for the awareness of this creative process and to be able to speak this word and release it into that creative law and know that as it always has, it is once again saying, yes, this good is underway now. And so I let it be. And so it is. Amen. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. That is a wrap of another episode of the Practical Prayer Podcast. <laughs> Have you looked in the comments? I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm like, okay, hang on. You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> What's this stream of rap about written by drunk? Okay. Um.
<laughs> That's another no. thing about New Thought. We do attract wonderful people. Uh, yes, yes. The, uh, uh, the rich variety. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. Oh, uh, and that's okay. That's okay. All unique expressions of God's love expressing in a different way. It's it's funny because when my children got some size on them, you know, they say, you know, mom, bring everybody home. <laughs> 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 so we always had a variety of guests at Thanksgiving and Christmas and any anything you know just i never thought about it's you you can come you can come and yeah. some people are not that comfortable with believing that it's okay you know that this person is really this sincere about it but um, <laughs> it only takes a minute <laughs> oh yeah I and mean, in my family growing up we would often you know find people who didn't have any other plans for thanksgiving or christmas and invite them over sure yeah come on in yeah. you just moved here from south africa and you work with <laughs> one of our sons so you got nothing going on come on over why not i mean that was the first time that pearl came to thanksgiving was in the 80s and she's still coming <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> she's still coming. She gets other offers now, but she's still coming. <laughs> we had one guest that would come, and uh, they would be, they would refer to him as "That's mom's friend," and other mm -hmm. people say, "Oh yeah, that's mom's friend." And I never thought of him as mom's friend. He was just you know here, and so one of them said, "You know why is so and so here all the time?" I said, "Think about it. They have four brothers and sisters." <laughs> <laughs> they live with you know they have a living arrangement with somebody and a living parent and they end up here what's mm -hmm. that tell you <laughs> it's like nobody wants them right <laughs> that's not a rocket science so that yeah, turned out that that was pretty correct that was pretty accurate but um we had those kinds of yes yeah I'm going to give a shout out to Darrell Watkins, who's the president of the Divine Science Federation International. Mm -hmm. Darrell, good to see you again. He was awesome last week at the Congress. So, and he's watching on some a face something or other, one of one of our channels that lets you do a thumbs up. So, is there a a pre I'm not a pre recording, but a, something that I could hear this later. Some of the uh, discussions. The, the Congress, yes. Uh, yes. The evening sessions are all on YouTube, on New Thought Media Network, the channels mm -hmm. upon which we are now broadcasting. Um, so the evening sessions are all uh, posted up there. And the, uh, the daytime sessions, uh, including the one where I gave you the shout out, uh, will be um, uh, available, as they say, real soon now. Mm. <laughs> I just want to hear how people, other people speak of of new thought yeah 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 Just... yeah because yeah, it's uh it, it 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 gets some richness to it um you know, as soon as you start triangulating in you realize oh this is just different ways of looking at the same point from different angles so which is wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. it's not it's not like it's not like the different branches or or teachings in new thought are different it's all the same teaching looking at it from a different way which is you know the I'm working on this dissertation now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so looking at things from different perspectives can be good, but then they can be overwhelming. Well, yeah. You know? so, I think that's more a sense of, the, the, of your overwhelm because you can, you can overdo anything. I've known you for a couple of years. You, you can overdo anything. <laughs> <laughs> you, you needn't, but you can <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yes i'm overdoing <laughs> okay thank god you only have six days left according to your own internal promise to get that thing finished because otherwise it's gonna be 500 pages uh how about we might be there now <laughs> okay so i'm you, weeding you can, spend, you can spend the next few days editing yeah <laughs> 
All right. I create I... these these wonderful things, and then it, then in my mind, you know, I create them, and then I'm looking like, okay, is that really? <laughs> is anybody going to look at that and really see? that that is a palace or does it just look like a whole bunch of stuff over there? You better fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us bring this episode of the Practical Prayer podcast live recording session to a close. Carol, as always, thank you. Thank you. And all y'all online, thank you as well. <laughs>